On day one, I spawned in as a baby lava shark. In front of me was none other than the almighty Witherlord fighting it out with my dad. You got this, dad! You're the strongest mob I know! The two of them clashed in a battle of epic proportions. My dad shot fireballs from his massive jaws while the Witherlord smashed at him with his hammer. The Witherlord even brought his army, but my dad was still able to put up a fight. I thought surely he would win, but the Witherlord was able to cast a powerful spell, bringing my dad to his knees. Max, run! Just then, the Witherlord dealt a killing blow to my father. No, dad! At last, I am now the apex predator of the nether. You'll pay for this! I'll defeat you! I swear! Silent shock! The Wither Lord attacked me. I did my best to retaliate, but I was too weak in my current state. I quickly ducked into the lava and swam away. Run while you can. I'll get to you in due time. On day two, I managed to escape the grasp of the Wither Lord. That was close. I better watch out. Suddenly, water was thrown on top of me, causing me to get poisoned. Ah! Water poisons lava sharks? Where is this coming from? The water kept coming, so I did my best to evade it. If I got hit with too many splashes of water, I was a goner. After a while, I realized I was now trapped in a cage of obsidian. The water mixed with the lava. Who's doing this? Looks like we got a little fishy. I looked up and discovered I was in the territory of the Gascoons, one of the biggest, baddest groups in the nether. Let me go or I'll bite your tentacles off. Why would we do that? I'm taking you to the boss. The gas began to shoot fireballs down onto me. I had to be careful since I only had half a heart. With so much distance between us, I wasn't able to get to them with my powerful lava shark jaws. Instead, I tried to fight back with my own lava abilities. I shot fireballs back at the gas above, but I was still too weak. I soon became overwhelmed and blacked out. On day three, I woke up inside of a cage with a lava axolotl. Who are you? Where are we? I'm Agony, and we're in the Gascoon's prison. What? We gotta get out of here! No way, they're too strong. The gas leader is one of the six powerful bosses of the nether. Then I gotta take him down before he kills us. I used my fireballs to melt through the iron bars of our cage, but I was then presented with a new problem. How am I gonna swim on land? There was no lava in sight, so I decided to get out by brute force. I hopped out of the cage and realized I now had slowness. I'll just have to hop around until I find more lava. I hopped ahead and did my best to stealth around the gas guards patrolling the area. Just then, I spotted a lava pool in the distance. Bingo! I went for it, but I was moving too slow. I got spotted by one of the guards. Yeah. I hopped like my life depended on it as the gas guards began to gain on me. Luckily, I managed to make one final leap into the lava pool. I went to swim away, but realized this wasn't the lava ocean, but a lava pond. I was cornered! No! How am I going to escape? Oh, who dares to escape my prison? I looked up and to my horror discovered the gas leader looming over me. On days four through seven, I came face to face with the leader of the ghasts. Oh boy. His sights were locked on me and immediately came barreling towards me. With nowhere to run, I was forced to fight. The gas leader began to shoot at me with incredibly powerful fire laser. The flames were so hot that they burned purple and dealt loads of damage. Not only did he have his laser, but he was also able to rain bombs down from the sky above. I retaliated with my lava blast, trying to dwindle down his health bit by bit, but he was so powerful it seemed like he wasn't going to give in. Things could have turned out differently if it weren't for the lava pool being here, and thanks to that, I was able to defend myself. With the distance between us, the situation was becoming more dire. At that moment, I remembered my father fighting until his last breath. A small spark was lit in my body, and I became fired up. He never gave in. I gotta keep fighting until the end. I mustered up all of my strength. With one final strike, I was able to defeat the gas leader. Suddenly, my fin grew larger as well as my entire body. I was now an adult lava shark and had five additional hearts. Killing nether bosses makes me stronger? Then I'll just have to take out the last five and get strong enough to defeat the Wither Lord. Unfortunately, I wasn't out of the woods yet. The guards had become even more aggravated now that their boss had been slayed by my hands. You'll pay for that! Get him! In my new upgraded form, I had the ability to use a molten hammer. Whoa, this is awesome! I began chomping them down one by one. Fighting these guys was a lot easier this time around. I even launched back their projectiles and killed them with their own firepower. After defeating all of the guards, Agni came out from hiding. Seeing me stand my ground had impressed them. You're amazing. Please, let me serve under you. Uh, sure. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something in the distance. A blaze was watching us from afar. Hide, we're being watched. We made haste and quickly dove under the lava until the blaze had finally left the area. 
Phew, good catch. I didn't even know someone was out there. We better make a home base before the other bosses find us. On days 8 through 10, Agni and I found a new spot to settle in. Time to get to work. We began using different nether blocks to build a massive shark head coming from the lava. I wanted it to capture the spirit of my people and the power I strove to obtain. This is great. Take this token of my gratitude. The lava axolotl tossed over some food. Ooh, thanks. I was still in a building mood, so I made a small shrine in honor of my dad to remember my motivation for my journey. I'll become the apex mob just like you, dad. Just then, Agni walked up and placed a sign of his own. What's that? These are the nether bosses you must defeat before you're strong enough to take on the Wither Lord. You already took down the Ghast Leader, but there are still the Blaze Battalion, the Piglin Pirates, the Nether Golems, the Strider Spartans, and the Hoglin Gang. And I got work to do. I wonder what kind of cool powers they'll all give me. Just as I let my guard down, strange nether creepers came out and began to approach my base. I just built this place! Get out of here! I harnessed the power of my lava attacks and began to shoot down each creeper one by one. I had to be quick so they wouldn't blow up my hard work. I was making good progress until one ran out of the pack with incredible speed. Oh no you don't! I quickly aimed a trick shot and took the creeper down before he could blow up my home. <sighs> the nether isn't a peaceful place. You never know what can attack you. With the base secured, I set off in search of my next victims. I was going to become powerful at all costs. On days 11 through 14, I explored the seas of the nether, looking for someone to fight. Come on, who wants to face me? I saw a group of piglins at the shore and began to swim up towards them. Ah, that's the shark that killed the ghost leader! Run! Okay, Davos. Ow, magma block. The piglins ran off before I could catch them. That's what I thought. Just then, a ghast approached me from above. Hey, big guy, fight me. Yeah, that's going to be a big pass. Definitely didn't wake up today and go, you know what I should do? Buddy shark sharking a lava. Your loss. I kept moving until I stumbled upon the Wither Lord overlooking a crimson forest. There he is, the apex predator of the nether. He doesn't even look that tough. Suddenly, the Wither Lord stormed the crimson forest, decimating everything in its path. I knew I definitely wasn't strong enough to take him on yet. Okay, maybe he is more powerful than I give him credit for. I kept my distance and continued searching for bosses to increase my power. On days 12 through 15, I continued to swim until spotting massive blaze rod pillars sticking out of the ground. Whoa, I must be entering Blaze territory. I continued moving deeper inside. I knew I must have been getting close to the leader of the Blaze Battalion as the number of pillars increased. Finally, after a lot of travel, I arrived at the gates of the Blaze Kingdom. Now I just need to swim on in. Stop right there, intruder! Out of nowhere, blaze guards swarmed around and began to attack. Using the lava, I maneuvered up and around their attacks, making it harder for them to reach me. It seemed like their armor made it impossible for them to shoot their usual fireballs at me, but because of that, they had a lot more health. I used my fire ability to scorch them, but it wasn't as effective. I switched over to my molten axe and began swinging, taking them out one by one. I had grown much stronger after my encounter with the ghasts. With one final attack, I used my fins to propel myself out of the lava and chomped the last remaining guard. Perfect! Now I can go inside. Just then, a larger guard descended in front of me. Halt! Who wishes to proceed into the Blaze Bastion? Me! Max! The Lava Shark! And why? To kill, I mean, to broker peace between the Lava Sharks and the Blazes. To be allowed entry, you must present a gift to our people. Oh, uh, okay. How about this? No, come back when you have something worthy. I swam away in frustration. What the heck am I going to find that's worthy of the blazes? On days 16 through 18, I began to swim around the depths of the nether's lava in hopes of finding something to give the blazes. Nether wart? A gold nugget? I don't know. What would a blaze even want? Just then, I spotted something large swim by under the lava. I'm not alone. I swam towards it carefully and discovered it was a massive lava guardian. Ooh, I bet they dropped something valuable. With my mind made up, I swam in and confronted the Lava Guardian. Hey pal, prepare to die! Why are you picking on me, puny fish? Because I need to get into the Blaze Bastion! You fool, that is one of the most dangerous places in the Nether. You must be truly deranged. Yep. I charged in full speed ahead, ready to take the treasure by force. I tried to use rage to my advantage, but each time I did, the Guardian would suck me in closer with magical powers and hit me with his melee attacks. He was slow and powerful. I knew he wasn't going to let me fight at a distance, so I took out my molten hammer and swung it at him up close. Each hit I managed to land dealt massive damage and brought me one step closer to my treasure prize. After a lot of back and forth and close calls, I was beginning to get an edge over him. With one final blow, I managed to take out the oversight 
besides lava fish. Victory for Max. Upon their death, they dropped a stunning amber crystal and a lava gauntlet for me. I knew the blazes couldn't resist the gem. Blaze Bastion, here I come. On days 19 through 22, I returned to the Blaze Bastion's gate with my new offering. Here's your stupid prize. Wow, this is incredible. Please, sir, come right in. The warrior escorted me through the city walls. Having fought so hard to get here, it made it all seem so magical. Once the tour was done, I was brought into the throne room. The place was beautiful and full of all kinds of different glowing blocks. It even had lava pools for me to swim through easily. Wow. Just then, the Blaze King presented himself to me. Welcome to our kingdom, Lava Shark. Appreciate it. I gotta ask, why is this place covered in lava? Well, we blazes are made of pure lava. But beyond that, it keeps this place even more protected. About that. Without warning, I went in head on to fight the Blaze King. I leaped out and charged into the Blaze Warrior. He attempted to pierce me while lunging forward with his sword, but I was able to narrowly avoid the sharp metal blade. He began summoning floating projectiles made of fire and ender magic. Launching them at me, I dodged a few, but the ones that hit me did big damage to my health. I swam further away to eat and regain some health, but he took advantage of the situation, trying to bash me with his shield. Summoning the projectiles again, he fired more my way, but this time around, I was able to deflect and send them back. He seemed to have been weakened by the damage, and as I smacked him with my molten axe, his flames changed from orange to blue. Angered, he started attacking more aggressively, shooting projectiles and creating flames that bursted from below. I had to take advantage of my speed in the lava and close combat just to deal damage. I continued swinging and cranking 90s around him. At this point, he was moving slower, and I could tell his health was low. After a fierce battle, I managed to take down the ruler of the blazes once and for all. Suddenly, a surge of power shot through my body. I once again grew even bigger in size, gaining five more hearts and the Blaze King's power. I feel stronger already! He struck down the boss! Get him! Before the Blaze Warrior could get me, I ducked into the lava and made my escape. On days 23 through 26, I escaped the Blaze Bastion and arrived back in my base where Agni was waiting. Did you beat the Blaze Battalion? <laughs> I sure did, Agni. Woohoo! Agni went ahead and crossed the Blazes off my list, leaving my target to be the Piglin Pirates. I'm coming for you next! Before I set off on my journey, I wanted to expand the base even further. I extended my build inwards to add more space and even created lava paths to make it easier to navigate throughout the entirety of the inside. Once my expansion of the base was complete, my stomach began to growl. Oh, I'm hungry! With that, I searched around a nearby pool of lava to see if I could find anything yummy to eat. During my search for food, I found a school of combustive cod. Don't mind if I do. I went through the school and killed lots of them for their delicious meat. Mmm, spicy! While I was at it, I got a few more in buckets to take back home to the base. When I returned, I made a tank to house some combustive cod for later. Now I had a consistent food source for me and Agni. Suddenly, I spotted a strange line in the lava with a little block at the end of it. Ooh, I definitely want that. I swam up and grabbed it, but felt stuck right after. It was a trap! Before I knew it, I was pulled into the air by a fisherman and pulled onto the shore. A lava shark? Oh, I have plans for you! Back off, bucko! I snapped at him with my powerful jaws, but he was able to evade me and knocked me in the head with his diamond sword. Everything went black. On days 27 through 29, I woke up inside of a strange aquarium full of lava. All around me, different players from far and wide were staring at me. I had been taken to the overworld. What the heck? I gotta get back to the nether! A little girl walked up and started to tap on the glass. Mommy, look at the funny orange shark! Ah, my ears! Cut that out! Suddenly, the girl's tapping was just too much for the tank to withstand. The glass shattered and lava began to pour out into the room. The attendees scattered. Now it was my chance. It's my time to shine. I flopped around the facility in search of a way to escape, chomping down any attendees that got in my way. That's what you get for messing with a lava shark. Finally, I found a room with a nether portal, but as I was about to jump to it, the fisherman got in my way. You're my greatest catch. You're not getting away. The fisherman took out his diamond sword and began to slash at me with all of his might. Unfortunately for him, even without lava to speed me up, I was much tougher than a mere human. I managed to overpower him with my incredible strength and take him out. Upon his death, he dropped a diamond chest plate. Not too shabby. 
I hopped into the portal and began to return to my base. I hope I never see another fisherman again. Suddenly, I spotted a ship in the distance. Is that the Piglin Pirates? New powers, here I come! On days 30 through 33, I swam up to the Piglin ship when they almost immediately spotted me. Shiver me timbers! That's the lava shark that's been taking out the bosses! That's right! We not coming aboard our ship! Fire! Without any time to react, the Piglin pirates began to launch cannonballs at me. I used my gauntlet to pull them into the lava, but they kept firing at me. When I got too weak, I was forced to hide under the lava and heal up. While I was down, they all climbed back up onto the ship, so I started pulling them down again. I did my best to evade it, but I wasn't able to do much since they were on a boat. Time to sink this thing! I swam up to the base of the pirate ship to try and rip it to shreds. Unfortunately, it was made of obsidian. Dang, I don't have a diamond pickaxe! The pirates continued to fire projectiles at me, which was starting to become overwhelming. I swam underneath the ship and found a trap door, but unfortunately for me, it was locked. If I can get the key, then I can destroy this boat from the inside! With that, I escaped the clutches of the Piglin Pirates, ready to return as soon as I had what I needed. On days 34 through 35, I continued on my search for the key. While looking around, I came across what looked like a beach. There were loads of Piglins and Striders all just chilling at the shoreline. What a lovely party! It would be a shame if someone crashed it! <laughs> I made sure to stay quiet as I crept up to the group swimming around and having fun. Finally arriving at the feet of my victims, I began chopping away, finishing off each unsuspecting victim one by one. Everyone out of the water! I mean lava! Screaming at the top of their lungs, the Striders began to vacate the area in an attempt to reach safety. Nuh uh, you're not getting away from me! I followed behind them and continued taking them out as they approached land. While scaring the Striders, I had noticed a glint of light coming from the beach. It looked like some sort of small object that one of the piglins might have left behind. As I approached it, I realized that it was the key that I'd been searching for. Sweet! Now that I'd found the key, it was time to pay the pirates another visit. On days 36 to 38, I returned to the ship and stealth around until I made it to the trap door. All right, it's infiltration time. I unlocked the door and hopped around the boat, immediately finding barrels full of gunpowder. How convenient. I used the crafting bench inside to craft some TNT using sand I got from the beach and set it up all around. This ship was about to blow. Just then, I heard heavy footsteps approaching. At the doorway stood none other than the Captain Piglin. There's a stowaway on my ship. Yo ho ho! I used my lava attack to light the TNT and hop back into the lava below. Uh oh! The ship erupted in flames, leaving only the obsidian base and debris behind. Me ship. We're going to sink! You'll pay for this! Good luck escaping me now! I charged in to engage the captain in combat. His attack was super strong, but I had the advantage now of being in my element. I used my blaze blaster on, which caused him to teleport. I realized he must have Enderman-like powers. After a long battle, I managed to take out the Captain Piglet and officially defeated the Piglet Pirates. I felt new power emerge inside of me. I grew bigger, gained five hearts, and the ability to teleport. I'm one boss closer to taking down the Wither Lord. On days 39 through 42, I was traveling home when I spotted a group of piglins. The minute they saw me, the group ran off in terror. <laughs> I guess they've already heard of my super epic run-in with their boss. I'm not so sure about that. I turned around and discovered the voice behind me belonged to none other than the Wither Lord. You've been making quite the buzz here in the nether. I heard you already took out three of the six nether bosses. That's right, and I'll take you out too. Is that a challenge? Foolish lava shark. I'll wipe you out in an instant, just like your father. In a fit of rage, I tried to attack him when he least expected it, but the attack had no effect on him. What? I'm not some lowly nether boss. I'm the apex mob. The Wither Lord used his incredible power to blast me into the air. When I landed, I was in another part of the nether altogether with only half a heart. This guy is crazy strong. Suddenly, a horde of skeletons began to approach me. Obey the Lord. Finish the lava shark. He blasted me into a trap. I had no time to think. I swam away as fast as I could from the horde. After a while, I managed to escape with my life. Even with three bosses under my belt, he's too powerful. I need to keep getting stronger if I want to stand a chance. On days 43 through 46, I arrived back at my base, but I immediately felt a bad feeling deep inside of me. 
Someone is here. I began to navigate the different areas of my base, carefully looking for the intruder. But after a while, I didn't have any luck. Maybe I'm crazy. Achoo! I swam around the corner and found a baby strider hiding. Gotcha! Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who do you work for? I don't work for anyone. Please don't hurt me. My home was destroyed and I don't know where to go. Ugh. Oh man, I feel bad. Sorry, you can live here. Yippee! I built the baby their own room, making sure it had everything a Strider could want, including plenty of lava. You like? I love! Suddenly, the Strider was pulled under the lava. Oh my gosh! On days 47 through 49, I investigated the disappearance of the Strider. Hello? Strider, where are you? Suddenly, I heard a horrible, ghostly wail in response. Boom. It's a lot scarier under the lava than I thought it would be. I swam deeper and deeper into the lava oceans of the nether until finally reaching its deepest depths. There, I found some gear lost to time. These must be items players have lost in the nether. I wonder how they didn't burn up though. Suddenly, I heard the ghostly wail once again, but I decided to shake it off. Must be my imagination. I continued my search for the lost rider until finally arriving at a massive area full of bones. What happened here? The bones go on for miles. Just then, out of nowhere, a terrifying monster swam up to me. Ah! I hightailed it out of the depths as quickly as I could and returned to my base. So don't swim too far under the lava. Noted. I don't mess with the nether golems. Huh? I turned around and discovered a nether golem standing in front of me. Before I could react, I was hit with a splash potion and knocked out. On days 50 through 53, I woke up to the sound of heavy machinery all around me. What happened? I looked around and realized that I had been placed on a conveyor belt and it was headed straight towards a massive tank of water. I gotta get out of here before I'm turned into obsidian! I struggled to break free, but I was surrounded by barriers all around me. I can't break through with my powers! I began to inch closer and closer towards the end of the belt. In a matter of moments, my journey was going to end. There has to be a way out! Just then, I spotted a gap in the barrier. I quickly lunged towards it with all of my strength and managed to escape the belt just in time. That was close. Suddenly, sirens began to go off around the entire facility, alerting nether golems to rush inside. Stop right there. Ah! I began to flop away as fast as I could, but I knew I couldn't keep them away for long with slowness. I need to find lava quick. On days 54 through 57, I was being pursued by the nether golem guards. I escaped the room I was in to discover that I was inside of a factory full of lava animals. Are those lava animals being used as fuel? I didn't have time to think with the guards hot on my tail. I teleported on top of the lava tank and jumped inside to hide. Luckily, they ran by without spotting me. That works for now. Psh, yeah, for now, every one of us will soon be burned out to power their machinery. Whose machinery? The nether golems. Wait a second. Those were the next people I wanted to take down. I gotta find their boss and get out of here then. I knew there was no way I was going to get there without lava to swim in, but I suddenly had an idea. It's destruction time! I smashed through the tank of the lava, causing it to pour everywhere. Whoa! You're strong enough to break these? You know it! I freed the lava animals and flooded the floor with lava. Once I was done, I had plenty of space to move. The guards are going to be busy with this mess. Time to find that boss! On days 58 through 60, I arrived at the office of the nether golem boss. There, he sat hunched over, almost as if he was asleep. This will be easy. Luckily, the place had already been flooded for my plans, so I swam forward to land the killing blow. Suddenly, he woke up. The golem stepped forward and lit himself red. He looked more powerful than before, and I realized what I had done. Did the lava make him stronger? Hello, Lava Shock. Of course it did. Our tech is powered by lava. Uh-oh. The massive golem began to attack me full force. He slammed down on me with his powerful arms, and I didn't think he could get any more powerful until he started spitting huge fireballs at me too. I started to wear him down, but then out of nowhere, he started absorbing the lava around him and healing himself. Not only did this make him even stronger, but it also cut the battlefield in half. Eventually, he sucked up the rest of the lava, and I was forced to flop around in my belly, but my powerful abilities were able to slowly wear him down. The fight was super difficult, but eventually I managed to overcome the powerful king of the nether golems. Upon his death, I suddenly gained more power, five more hearts, and his awesome helmet. I did it! Time to get out of here! On days 61 through 63, I returned to my base to find all the lava animals I had freed from the nether golem factory all waiting. 
Why are you guys here? You're like super cool. We want to live here and serve you. Uh, sure, I guess. I got to work on rooms for all my new lava animal residents. I made sure it had everything a lava animal could want so they were all comfortable. This is sick. Take this. They tossed over a forsaken staff as a token of their appreciation. Once I finished their rooms, I got to work on expanding the base more in general. I added a private pool for myself so I could have some privacy, and I decorated the area with soul lanterns. This place is looking nice. As I looked around, I spotted the old room I had made for the baby strider that was pulled under the lava. I wonder if they're okay. Just then, they popped into the lava right in front of me. Wait, you were the guy I built the room for and got pulled under the lava. I thought you were dead. No, I was simply brought to my senses. The Strider Spartan showed me that clearly a Strider shouldn't live amongst pathetic lava animals like you. Guards, come seize him. Out of nowhere, more Striders began to rise from the lava below. What the heck? I swam away from them as they began to march towards me. I ran and ran until I stopped by a massive hole in the ground. I definitely don't want to fall in that. Unfortunately, the Striders managed to catch up. I was cornered. Surrender to our numbers, Lava Shark. No way. This is madness. No, this is Strider. The Strider ran forward and kicked me, causing me to plummet into the hole below. Ah! On days 64 through 67, I woke up in a strange sewer system. Is all of this underneath the nether? Just then, I heard a low growl behind me. I turned around and found a massive lava monster standing behind me. Bring it on! I charged in to take on the oversized lava slug. But to my horror, he absorbed my attack and grew larger. Uh-oh. I ran away as fast as I could through the multiple corridors of the lava sewers. But no matter where I ran, the lava monster always seemed to find me. I'm gonna get caught at this rate! Suddenly, a tiny mushroom creature hopped out of nowhere. This way, this way! I followed the mushroom and managed to throw the lava monster off my tail. On days 68 through 71, I spoke to the mushroom for some more intel. That was close. My name is Max. Can you take me back to the surface? I'm Sherry, and that's the problem. I've been lost here for what feels like centuries. I don't have that kind of time. There has to be a way out. I swam around with Sherry, following behind me in search of an exit. We were about to give up when suddenly we spotted a sign pointing towards it. Let's get out of here. We swam around the corner and discovered the lava monster was standing guard right in front of the exit. How are we going to move him away? I have an idea, but you're going to have to lure him to me. Um, okay. Sherry left and I gathered my courage to alert the lava monster. Hey, lava brains, over here. The lava monster lunged at me and I rushed over toward Sherry. Once it was close enough, Sherry unleashed her attack. Now! Sherry shot the lava monster with sleep pores, causing them to fall asleep. Quick, let's go! Before he wakes up! The two of us booked it towards the exit and managed to escape the dark depths of the sewer. Once we arrived on the other side, we were outside of the Strider Spartan's fortress. I better get to that leader before we're caught. Thank you for everything, man! The two of us parted ways, and I headed deeper into Strider Spartan territory. On days 72 through 74, I navigated through the Strider Spartan territory until arriving at a massive battlefield. What's this all about? Suddenly, a massive Strider emerged before me. I see you've escaped our sewers. You're that lava shark that's been killing all of the other nether bosses. That's right, and you're next. I'm your toughest foe yet. I'll show you why the Strider Spartans are the superior clan of the nether. I charged at him, but he knocked me back with his skull power. He shot incredibly fast projectiles, so I had to move as fast as I could in order to dodge his shots. I used my powers to pull him into the lava, but of course that didn't hurt him since he was a Strider. His shots were super strong, and I was starting to take significant damage. I fought him with all of my might, but for the first time, I thought I was going to lose to another boss. I have to pull through. Out of nowhere, I heard a familiar voice. Incoming! I turned around and discovered the lava monster from the sewer was running straight towards me. Ah! I quickly ducked down into the lava and the beast ran past me. Ha! You're retreating! I win! Uh-oh. The lava monster quickly ran in and defeated the Spartan leader. Suddenly, I felt a strange sensation causing me to grow larger, gain five hearts, new armor, and a ton more strength. I guess I still weakened him enough to reap the rewards. I was eager to try out my new strength, so I used it on the lava monster in front of me. To my surprise, he went down in a single blow. Whoa, I'm so powerful. The Wither Lord won't know what hit him. Sherry then hopped out of hiding. Bringing the lava monster to help was a good idea. Thanks, Sherry. I'm always happy to help. 
the two of us headed back towards the base to prepare for the final nether boss. On days 75 through 78, I arrived back at the base with my new friend Cherry. What you think? This place is crazy! Do you think I can move in? Sure! Before starting on Jerry's room, I first got to work on expanding the base more in general. I made the belly of the shark base deeper so that there was more space for all my new allies. Once I was finished, I made a separate room for Sherry with everything a mushroom monster can ask for. I made sure to include plenty of blocks from the nether's crimson forests. This is cozy! Thanks! Finally, I decided to refine the rest of my base by adding little details to really fancy it up. Not too shabby for someone without any thumbs. With the base properly expanded, I met up with Agni by our list. He had already crossed out the Strider Spartans, leaving only the Hogland Gang left. One more to go. That's right. I heard the Hogland Gang is really tough, but I know you'll overcome this. Suddenly, we heard a noise coming from behind the wall of our base. What is that? I went to the sound of the voices and minded open to see two Wither Skeletons having a conversation. Shoot, he found us! The two skeletons ran off and I chased them as fast as I could. I didn't take kindly to trespassers. Just as I had them in my grasp, I was suddenly led straight into a trap. Wither skeletons were waiting all around me. Now, boys! Ah! The wither skeletons all ambushed me. I fought them off the best I could, but I was flopping around on the land. I had to lead them into the lava, where they could be on my turf. Once they were, I used every power I had at my disposal to take the rest of them out. Luckily, I was much stronger than the last encounter I had with them. Whew, that was close. I wouldn't say you're out of the woods yet. Out of nowhere, the Wither Lord revealed himself. I have to say, you've really outdone yourself. The fact you were able to defeat my Wither Skeleton army shows just how strong you've become. Too bad, I have also grown in strength. I don't care how strong you've got. Let's end this! I charged in full speed at the Wither Lord. Even with only the power of five nether bosses, I felt confident I could finish this now. The two of us clashed with our powers of epic proportion. He hit me with his huge hammer, and I retaliated with my skull and lava powers, but it seemed like it still wasn't enough. His nether powers were way too strong. The longer the fight went on, the quicker I realized I was still no match for him. His power was even stronger than it was before. I'm losing health too fast! I gotta get out of here! I swam deeper into the lava so that the Wither Lord could no longer reach me. <laughs> You're a coward. You'll never be the apex predator of the Nether. The Wither Lord was about to finish me when suddenly the Hogland Gang attacked him. The Wither Lord burned through their army like nothing, but more and more reinforcements continued to arrive. Ah, pesky hogs. I'll be back for the Lava Shark later. The Wither Lord then retreated. If you ever come around here again, you'll feel the full force of the Hogland Gang. The Hogland Gang? Huh. Maybe if I'm able to defeat them, I'll definitely be able to take down the Wither Lord. On days 79 through 83, I followed the Hoglins to their base. When I arrived, I realized it was a gym. That's weird. I tried to enter the base, but suddenly a giant ripped Hoglin stopped me. Whoa, 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 bub. You ain't tough enough to enter our gym. What? I'm tough? Okay, how tough are you? How tough am I? Well, uh, I can do this. I shot a spectacular display of lava powers into the sky. How about that, huh? Sorry, not impressed. What else you got? I had plenty more where that came from. I showed off all my incredible lava shark powers to dazzle the stubborn guard. Yawn. Boring. Where's your boss? Tell him I want to face him to see who the real apex predator of the nether is. Ha! You think you're the first guy to come over here wanting to fight the boss? Give me a break. Well, then how do I get in? You need some strength training, small fry. I could train you, but I'll need some supplies first. The buff hoglin tossed over a list of training materials. Let's see. Protein powder, five bottles of water, and an amulet of strength. You got it. I know the nether like the back of my fin. I set off in search of the items I needed. Most of them were from the overworld, so I figured this would be a difficult journey. Just then, I spotted a grocery store in the nether. Huh, that's convenient. I flopped into the store and found all the items I needed to get into the Hoglet base. I purchased everything and was officially ready to begin my training. Final nether boss, here I come! On days 84 through 89, I returned to the Hoglin Gang's hideout and gave the buff Hoglin everything he asked for. Thanks. All right, let's get started. Follow me. The buff Hoglin led me towards the first part of my training session, the treadmill. I hopped on the treadmill and fought against the force the best I could. Without lava, I had slowness, so it made staying on track really difficult. Luckily, I had already overcome harder things. Not bad. Let's move on. My next challenge was to swim laps in the lava and jump through hurdles. 
Do I look like a dolphin to you? No, but there's a reason why dolphins are more athletic. They hit the gym unlike you lazy sharks. Lazy? I'll show you! I swim through the course with grace and speed, clearing each hurdle to show the hoglin who is boss. How's that? Pretty good for a lava shark. We can move on to the final challenge. The hoglin took me to the final challenge, which to my surprise was a block of obsidian. Break this block with your bare fins. What? That's impossible! This is for babies. You're not a baby, are you? Do it! Ugh, fine. I tried over and over again to break the obsidian with no luck. But the more I tried, the closer it seemed I was getting. After a lot of failed attempts, I managed to break through it. I did it! It is time. The buff hoglin took me to an area with no lava in sight. All right. It's time for us to face each other in combat. What? I don't want to fight you. I want to fight your boss. Surprise, surprise. I am the boss. On days 90 through 93, I was face to face with the Hoglin's leader. You were the leader this whole time? And what's with this arena? I'm at a total disadvantage without lava. I knew you would eventually come, so I designed this arena specifically for you. If you need lava, you'll have to jump for it while also avoiding my attacks. I looked up and noticed that there were pools of lava suspended above my head. Okay, let's do this. The two of us charged forward and engaged in combat. The Hoglin leader may have been slow, but he made up for his speed with brute strength. He charged me with his powerful tusks and slammed his fists into the ground to hit me with a shockwave. Thanks to my training on the treadmill, I was able to fend myself longer on land than before. But even with my advantage, I still was no match for the Hoglin. All right, Lava, I'm coming for you. I honed in my jumping and strength training to go high enough to reach the lava container suspended above. I was able to smash the glass in a single blow and began to fill the arena with lava. I repeated this over and over again until the room was full. Not bad. With my new footing, I rushed down the Hoglin leader. I was going to win no matter what. The lava slowed him down enough that I quickly got the advantage. After a while, I managed to defeat the Hoglin's boss. Woohoo! Congratulations. You have proven to me that you're worthy of my power. The Hoglin tossed over a Hoglin maze as well as a map to the Wither Lord's castle. I felt a strange sensation inside of me. I grew bigger in size and gained five more hearts. I've defeated all six nether bosses. Time to take on the apex. On days 94 through 98, I returned back to my base one final time before facing the end of my journey. It's building time. I decided to add my own personal gym in honor of my training with the Hoglin gang. I added a treadmill and other workout equipment so I could keep my strength up. With that, my Lava Shark base was officially complete. I wish my dad could have seen this. Just then, Agni floated up to me. Hey, I wanted to show you something. I followed the Lava Axolotl to our list to find that all six names were finally crossed off. Wow, it's been some journey, huh? Yeah, I wanted to give you something. Agni tossed over some incredible new armor. Promise me you'll finish this and become the Apex Nether Mob. I promise. It's time that I finish this. On day 99, I followed the map I had gotten from the Hoglin leader and arrived at the Wither Lord's castle. This place is incredible. I wonder if I get to keep it when I'm the Apex? Just then, a horde of Wither Skeletons ambushed me. I honed in all of my powers I had gotten on my journey and blasted down each of the little warriors one by one. My strength was far too overwhelming for the Wither Skeleton army, and I was able to defeat them all. Is that the best you got? I think you forgot about me. Out of nowhere, a mutant Wither Skeleton emerged in my path. You don't stand a chance against the Wither Lord. Turn back. No way! I'm not leaving until I'm the Apex! The mutant Wither Skeleton took out his two massive blades and began to slash me down. He was powerful enough to send shockwave projectiles flying at me from afar. Sometimes, he would even lunge at me with all of his might. Unfortunately for him, he was in my domain. I used the lava around me to my advantage and evaded his attacks the best I could. I tried out my brand new Hoglin Mace to deal damage whenever he got too close. When I managed to slip away from his onslaught, I pummeled him with the power of my Forsaken Staff and Lava Blaster until he got weaker and weaker. The battle was tough, but I managed to defeat the Mutant Wither Skeleton. Wither Lord, here I come! On day 100, I entered the throne room of the Wither Lord where he stood waiting for me. I thought I had warned you not to face me. As if. I'm not scared of you. I'm going to take back my dad's title. You're finished. Have it your way. It's about time I got you out of my hair anyways. The final battle of who the strongest mob in the nether had begun. 
The Wither Lord started by summoning some of his armored skeleton goons. I knew being outnumbered was bad news, so I started by taking them out one by one. The Wither Lord kept sending more and more of his forces at me as he hit me with attacks of his own. They seemed endless, but I kept hanging on. I managed to clear them out and keep going. He smashed into me with his giant hammer, dealing massive damage. I fought back the best I could and evaded his moves. I was getting good damage with my Forsaken Staff, but it broke. To make things worse, he began to fire skulls at me, making it nearly impossible to get in. But I couldn't give up. I was so close to victory. It's now or never. I swam in with my Molten Hammer and dealt more damage up close. Finally, after a fierce battle, I defeated the Wither Lord, officially making me the Apex Mob of the Nether. I'm the strongest mob to ever live!